Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I bring you guys our pre-game press conference here in our team builder for the NBA Week 1. The Minnesota Vikings in their first ever match going to be taking on the Free State Torcats and Coach Duncan Knee Deep. If you guys are excited for this matchup, definitely show some love on that like button down below and definitely make sure you guys subscribe if you are new. I'm going to be talking about Duncan's team to kick things off. We'll talk about our team and why I'm bringing the team I'm bringing and you guys can get hyped for the match that's coming up tomorrow looking to be a showdown throwdown I've never actually faced Duncan before and I know this is his first time in a league he's in this league and the GBA so I actually play him twice you'll see uh, we play him week two of the GBA and of course week one here in the NPA so we got quite a few matches against them but different teams and I got my focus on this matchup right here and I'm very excited to throw down guys so let's take a look at his team here Kicking things off, he's got a Garchomp. Garchomp, very, very scary Pokemon. 102 base speed, of course. Thing hits incredibly hard. Wouldn't be surprised if he brings some sort of a Sandstorm variant, but Garchomp does match up relatively well against my team. He's got an Alakazam, very fast threat, of course, with that Magic Guard ability, dodging those entry hazards. Probably going to be Focus Sash. Alolan Muck. Very, very bulky Pokemon with only one weakness to ground. Very likely that he brings, like, an Assault Vest variant, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that. He's got Ditto on his team. Uh, Ditto might be a bit surprising to see, but it actually is pretty good in this format. Uh, Ditto basically stops setup sweepers, so you do have to be very cautious around that, especially with a team like mine where I have a couple Pokemon that are relying on setting up to be successful. So definitely got to be a little bit weary about that Ditto. Togetic, of course, very bulky Eviolite Pokemon with Defog, one of his hazard removers. Also uh, can do like cleric type stuff. Nothing too crazy otherwise. Lantern, bulky waters, electric type Pokemon with two cool abilities, Volt Absorb and Water Absorb. If he brings it, pretty sure he would bring it with... Uh, uh, water absorb but we'll see he's got the cartana of course cartana very very hard hitting leaf uh or leaf it's a leaf type no it's a grass and steel type pokemon very good defense very good attack stat insane attack stat really but low uh low defense or special defense and low hp so you can definitely take advantage of that and of course its speed is pretty good terrakion very very big monster man terrakion just plows through teams with a great stab combination of uh, uh stone edge and close combat does get priority through quick attack can set up through rock polish and uh swords dance not to mention has the opportunity to set up entry hazards for his squad. He's got a uh, regular golem, not a Lolan golem, which is of course the rock and ground type Pokemon. Could serve as a pretty good entry hazard lead. Otherwise just hits pretty hard, but has a couple of core weaknesses. Obviously Zatu can bounce away those entry hazards, making it pretty annoying to play around if I try to set up stealth rocks or something like that. And last but not least, he went with Rampardos, the big head smashing monster. The big head smashing dinosaur Rampardo. Sorry guys, super tired. It's like way early. I always have to record these matches and these pregames super duper early in the day. But anyway, that's his squad. In terms of what I'm thinking he's gonna bring, definitely expecting the Garchomp. I think the Alolan Muck is like million percent coming. Cartana, pretty sure. Terrakion, pretty sure. Alkazam, pretty sure. And then I think he's either gonna bring Ditto, Togetic, or Zatu. I mean, that would be my guess if I had to say. I don't see Lantern coming. I don't see uh, Golem coming. I don't really see Rampardos coming. Uh, I mean, he could bring like a Scarf Rampardos, uh, which would be pretty scary to be perfectly honest but i don't really anticipate it so yeah let's jump into our team matchup here first pokemon we're bringing uh, i found a pretty big opening on his team for rafiki here our infernape nasty plot fire blast vacuum wave hidden power ice decimates his entire team after a nasty plot a vacuum wave can one shot terrakion it one shots cartana without the nasty plot uh hidden power ice one shots garchomp very nice there. Fire Blast just for general coverage and to hit things like Togetic after a Nasty Plot. So very, very good stuff there. Obviously, we... Uh. Man, it's not an A-Drive commentary, but I don't yawn. But obviously, we uh, speed side with Terrakion. We outspeed a lot of his threats like Garchomp, which is very useful. And again, I like the fact that we have the uh, the Nasty Plot there to boost up, potentially hit some Fire Blast. But we are going to have to weaken his team for this thing to sweep. But I think having that priority is really cool. It was either this set or a Scarf set, and I kind of like this set, the Nasty Plot set. So pretty simple stuff there. The next Pokemon we're bringing is Eclipse and across my first round pick here with a funky set this week. I'm running a max HP, uh, mostly physically defensive with a little bit of special defense to ensure I can live two Shadow Balls from the Alakazam. Morning Sun for recovery, Toxic for general shenanigans, Stealth Rock for hazards, obviously, to kind of ch chip down those Pokemon on the switch-ins, and Earthquake, because Earthquake hits a couple things really hard. His primary switch in Necrozma is probably going to be the Muck, so by hitting it with an Earthquake, I actually two-hit KO most variants of Muck, unless he's, like, physically defensive, so that's kind of cool. Obviously, this set is completely walled by Zatu. It's also mostly walled by Togetic, but I can stall out Togetic with Toxic and Heal Bells, so that's pretty cool, because Togetic can't really do much back to me. Uh, Earthquake does hit the Terrakion super effectively. It can wear 
tear down the Alakazam as well, which is quite nice. Garchomp really can't do much to me, so I can just Toxic that. And again, the Toxic is there for just general shenanigans, hopefully toxicing like a Ditto switching in trying to copy me or uh, the Golem or whatever, but uh, kind of a weird set. Again, I was tossed with a couple things. Necrozma can wall, uh, the, it can help wall the Garchomp, it can help wall the Tar Terrakion very well, um, and also hits the Muck super effectively. Again, I wanted to have recovery and I wanted to have Stealth Rocks, so Mono Attacking Earthquake definitely a little funky, could end up biting me in the butt in this match, but I'm hoping it ends up paying off. It ends up being super effective, uh, pun intended, because hopefully we'll hit a couple things super effective. The next Pokemon we are gonna be bringing, of course, man, I have a chronic yawn problem, guys. I don't know what to tell you, is Alolan Ninetales. Hit that thumbs up button, by the way, if I made you yawn in this video. Alolan Ninetales rocking max speed, max special attack with the light clay to guarantee that we can get up eight turns of Aurora Veil. My goodness. Uh, this thing outspeeds everything in his team except for Alakazam, which is quite nice. Uh, and I speed tie Kartana. Uh, Moonblast has a chance to, uh, it, it can one shot the Terrakion after a little bit of damage. Uh, Blizzard just hits really hard and Freeze Dry to hit the Lantern. It's three a KO on that. Otherwise, uh, we don't really need Blizzard. I actually was debating on Encore on this set, but I kind of like Blizzard just to hit things harder. It hits the muck a little bit harder. It's gonna hit things switching in a little bit harder and gives me something to hit things like Togetic if I need to, um, and, and Zatu as well. So, cause I'm a little worried about those two as you saw my Necrozma's walled by them. So it's nice to have that little bit of extra damage, but really this thing is meant to get up that Aurora Veil and provide the team support for eight amazing turns of reflect and light screen shenanigans. The next Pokemon is gonna be our Meadow here. Beautiful Shaman rocking max HP, max defense. So fully physically defensive Shaman. Seed Flare, Hidden Power, Fire, of course, for Kartana, Synthesis, and Leech Seed. Uh, this thing is meant to just take hits all day. It can sit in front of the Kartana, 1 million percent walls it. It can take a couple hits from Terrakion, get some health back with leftovers. I don't have to worry about status, which is really nice. I can take a hit or two from the Mach, which is quite nice as well. Obviously, I can't do much back to it, but we could Seed Flare and get some drops on it, so that could be really good. But Ultimately, this thing is meant to just take hits all day. It can take hits from the Garchomp and Seed Flare it and put in a lot of work. It can take hits from, like I said, the Kartana all day. It helps with the Lantern, it helps with the Rampartos. So I really, really like this Shaman set and it's a great middle ground switch into a couple of his offensive threats like Terrakion and stuff like that. So I really think the Shaman could put in some work. <laughs> Um, last, but, uh, well, I guess second to last here is gonna be our Crocodile here, Steve, Steve Irwin. I grew up uh, watching Steve Irwin and the Crocodile Hunter as a kid, and definitely one of uh, one of my favorite things to watch as a youngster. But we're running the Adamant Moxie Choice Scarf variant. He's got a lot of weaknesses to Earthquake in his team, uh, you know, specifically the Terrakion, the Muck, things like that. Uh, you know, obviously Lantern, Rampardos, Alakazam's not gonna wanna take it. So he's probably gonna bring something that flies, either the Zatsu or the Togetic, but nevertheless, this thing can put in some work, man. Knock off is great. Fire Fang to hit Kartana if I need to. I do outspeed it. Pursuit, of course, does trap and one-shot the Alakazam unless he's Focus Sash. So that's really cool. And again, we are adamant to hit as hard as we can. We got that Moxie. If we get a kill, we do get a Moxie boost. So all those things there are looking pretty nice. So definitely liking this Crocodile in this match. I think it's gonna be very effective against this team. He's got a pretty fast team, that's the thing. You like Garchomp, Zam, Kartana, Terrakion puts all, all four of those are above 100 base speed. So makes it very hard to prep for the speed he has. And then he has a lot of slow things too. So it's a little weird. But not last, but most certainly not least this time, is gonna be our star boy here, Minior, or Manior, rocking a very unique set. I'm very excited about this set, because this is this is all your boy here, and I'm hoping it works out. But uh, we're running max special attack, ma uh, almost max attack, and a tiny bit of speed, naive nature, shields down, white herb, substitute, shell smash, hidden power, ice, and earthquake. After a shell smash, we out outspeed his entire team, which is very cool. Um, and uh, that's even if we're in shields down form, uh, or shields up form, whatever it's called, uh, with the shield up, we still outspeed stuff. We've got this substitute there, which is a very important tech move in this game. Uh, the reason being is obviously, as I mentioned, Ditto can transform, but if you have a substitute up, Ditto cannot transform into you, and therefore does not get the stat boost. So the perfect scenario is I sent out Minior, he can't touch me because I have an Aurora Veil up, I click Cell Smash, he goes into his, his check or whatever, he tries to hit me, he hits me, I live the hit, and then he thinks he's tricky and switches into Ditto to potentially steal my boosts, 
afterwards, but he can't because I go for substitute, and then with a substitute up, he is he is in, in really bad situation. Uh, so I, I really do like this set. I think it could be really cool uh, to help me to protect against the Ditto. Hidden Power Ice uh, one-shots the Garchomp after a Shell Smash. It can one-shot the Kartana. It, it, it can two-hit KO the um, the Togetic and one-shot the Zatu, so that's kind of cool. And then, of course, Earthquake just decimates the rest of his team. So uh, definitely liking this set. No stab on it. Went with Substitute because of the Ditto. Was going to run Power Gem. Went with Substitute. We got, like I said, Max Special Attack, a lot of attack investment, tiny bit of speed, so we can outspeed all those threats and all that good stuff. But I really like this Minior set, and I love this Pokemon. I think it's really cool looking. So either way, I'm excited for this matchup. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, I've never played Duncan before, so I don't really know what to expect. Uh, I'm not really familiar with his play style or anything like that, but he's got a pretty solid team. I think we've got a good team too, though. I really think we have a solid team here. Uh, it's just going to be, I have a couple win conditions here. Infernape could definitely be a sweeper. Uh, Crocodile can totally clean up. It's also a great revenge killer, Crocodile is. Uh, Shaman's going to take those hits. Ninetales is there to set up that Aurora Veil and provide some support. Ninetales can actually put in some work too. And then Minior is a is a kind of like a red card. A, a, a ace up my sleeve is a way to sweep too if I can get that Aurora Veil up between Minior and uh, and uh, you know, Infernape, we could definitely put some work in, and then Shaman and Necrozma supporting the team otherwise. So that's our squad there. Pretty simple breakdown this time. Sorry about all the yawning, guys. Like I said, I usually record these pretty early. It's currently 9 in the morning, which is still pretty early to be waking up. Uh, I've been up for a while now, but it's uh, it's early to be recording anyway. I usually try to record at like 10.30 in the morning. But uh, nevertheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed our team breakdown. Let me know what your thoughts are on our squad. Matchup will be up tomorrow against the Free State Toracats. I'm excited. I hope you guys are as well. That's going to be it for me, guys. I am your coach, A-Drive, for the Minnesota Viking Volts. I'm going to catch you guys next time. Peace.